I'm going to talk about the feeling of consciousness in the CTM and the, then the feeling of free will in the CTM. Um, Uh, so what makes you feel conscious? What gives you, a human, your feeling of consciousness? Just so we're clear on that. For example, do you hear a voice in your head? Do you hear yourself talking to yourself? Can you picture yourself in your mind's eye waking up in the morning? Do you remember yourself as a child trying to do the impossible? Like using the magical power of thought to close a door, you know, you can use your power of thought to move your arm. Can you use it to close the door? Apparently not. Can you use it to turn on a light? No, can't do that. In answering these questions, you, uh, let's see, I'm, I'm, unfortunately, I have to get rid of being able to see anybody. In answering these questions, you tap into your feeling of consciousness. Can the CTM tap into something like that? What might enable a robot with CTM brain to feel conscious? LTM processors essential for consciousness include first the inner speech processors for transforming brainish thoughts in STM into something akin to outer speech. CTM needs to do this for commenting and planning. Another important processor is a model of the world processor for maintaining labeled models of the world. The labels are for many things, but among them to distinguish self from not self. For instance, you move a leg with the power of thought by moving the leg in that model of the world. And that's how you learn um, what is you and what is not you. Here's a baby. And they move. Discovered its left leg. <laughs> You'll see it moving over to its right leg. No, nope, the right leg doesn't move, but the left leg moves. <laughs> anyway. Uh, so those are processors are essential. You also need to process processors for to have the ability to think, including the motivation, energy, and drive to do it. Um, we're pretty clear on the inner speech and model of the world processors. We have still to figure out how to measure that minimal ability to think. What might enable a robot with CTM brain to feel conscious? So LTM, so we mentioned LTM processors essential for consciousness include the inner speech processors. Here's a little more detail. More generally, inner speech can be any inner thought or what the senses take in when awake or dreaming. Those senses are uh, the outer senses, like ears, eyes, and fingers on the world, and even your stomach. Inner senses, such as the mind's ears, mind's eyes, mind's fingers, and mind's stomach. All thoughts and sensations are in brainish, the language of the brain. Brainish words are gis. GIS are multimodal sounds, images, tactile sensations, tastes, odors, and so on. Brainish GIS describe all that we're aware of, awake or dreaming. How might a robot feel conscious? In more detail, um, there's a, uh, we talked about inner speech. Now the model of the world processor, it maintains labeled models of the world the label stamp the CTM in those worlds as being CTM. They label the CTM in those models as conscious to distinguish all that CTM has direct power of thought control over from what it has only indirect or no control. Uh, here's a picture of Yo uh, Yoda. If Yoda's brain is a CTM, then Yoda is conscious of the rock as being self. In other words, what Yoda, Yoda has a model of the world and by moving the rock up and down in the model of the world, Yoda sees that the rock out there in the real world actually moves. So the rock out there is part of Yoda's self. Now, why would a robot feel conscious? 
Looking at the CTM from the viewpoint of the outside world, we see that something about CTM is conscious. Specifically, the CTM considers itself conscious. What is conscious cannot be the model of the world processor or any other processor, as processors have no feelings. They are just machines running algorithms. We propose the view that CTM as a whole feels conscious as it is normally understood as a consequence in part of the fact that the model of the world processor views the CTM and its models of the world as conscious and that this view is broadcast to all processors. That's the main point here. The CTM and its models of the world. The, the model of the world processor views the CTM and its models of the world as conscious and that this view is broadcast to all processors. That's it for consciousness. And now for free will. So uh, before we go, Manuel, I just want to mention that that uh, notion that you have for the feeling of consciousness is a little bit like Michael Graziano's uh, model as well for the feeling of consciousness. Yes. <laughs> Again. Wonderful. Thank you for that. Uh, so now free will. Uh, the paradox of free will is captured by uh, Samuel Johnson's observation. All theory is against the freedom of the will. All experience is for it. So Samuel Johnson uh, lived uh, taught, uh, together. Uh, Newton was at the end of his life when Samuel Johnson was in the middle of his life. All theory is against the freedom of the will because in Newton's physics, the world is deterministic and everything is determined. All theory is against the freedom of the will, but all experience is for it. Stan DeHaney bestows a contemporary voice. Our brain states are clearly not uncaused and do not escape the laws of physics. Nothing does but our decisions are genuinely free whenever they are based on a conscious deliberation that proceeds autonomously without any impediment, carefully weighing the pros and cons before committing to a course of action. When this occurs, we are correct in speaking of a voluntary decision, even if it is, of course, ultimately caused by our genes. We add to Dehaney, computation takes time. To make a decision, a CTM evaluates its alternatives, an evaluation that takes time. And during that time, the CTM is free, indeed may even feel free to choose whichever outcome it deems best. So what gives CTM the knowledge that it has free will? Consider a moment in chess when the CTM asks itself, what move should I make? meaning this question has risen to STM and through broadcast has reached the audience of LTM processors. In response, a number of those processors submit suggestions to the competition. The winner of the competition reaches STM and gets broadcast. The colored arrows there are showing the, the suggestions coming from long-term memory. The continued back and forth sequence of questions, suggestions, and answers that appear in STM, each broadcast globally to all LTM, give CTM knowledge of its control. The episodic memory processor stored that knowledge. If the CTM were asked how it generated a specific suggestion, in other words, what thinking went into making that suggestion, its inner speech process would be able to articulate the fraction of conversation that reached STM, though perhaps not, not much more. Now for the feeling, why does the CTM feel that it has free will? Many LTM processors compete to produce the CTM's final decision, but CTM is only consciously aware of what got into STM, which is not all that was submitted to the competition. Moreover, much of CTM, meaning most of its processors, are not privy to the unconscious chatter among processors. To the CTM, enough is consciously unknown about the process that the decision can appear at times 
to be plucked from thin air. Even so, although CTM does not consciously know how its suggestions were arrived at, except for what is in the high level broad strokes broadcast by STM, it knows that its suggestions came from inside itself. The CTM can rightly take credit for making its suggestions. After all, they did come from inside the CTM, can explain some of them with high level stories from its episodic memory. And as for what it cannot explain, it can say, I don't know, or I don't remember. It is the knowledge that there are choices, that it, the CTM has knowledge of those choices and ignorance as well, that generates the feeling of free will. So this is uh, my last slide, uh, thoughts concerning the CTM. Um, why is STM so tiny? Uh, people who try building something like a CTM think, oh, well, you know, why don't we put lots of chunks into STM? Uh, but that's a problem. Uh, ima imagine that uh, every processor had, uh, could put its chunk into STM and you'd have as many chunks as there are processors, you wouldn't have processors fo focusing on a single thought. So all processors focus on the same thought if you have only one chunk. What are GIS and why are they important? GIS are short brainish sentences. They are all that we know of the world. To understand exactly what a GIS can be, think of the multimodal GIS that make up a dream. GIS are the frames that make up a multimodal movie, like the movie you see in your dreams. Uh, Libet, uh, why does it take an unconscious chunk roughly 300 milliseconds to reach STM, but only 10 milliseconds to go from STM to LTM? Lenore already talked about that, so I'll skip on. Sleep, what is it for? Uh, list machines typically use sleep for garbage collection. The CTM does that too. Dreams. Who or what creates and controls the scene? Any processor can take on the role of dream generator. It sets up and maintains the scene. Who or what responds to the created scene? All processors respond to the scene. What is meditation doing? The meditation processor increases its own weight by paying massive attention to itself and by comparison, lowering the weight of every other processor. How does hypnosis work? Like meditation, it has to do with focusing attention. And uh, that's the end. Thank you. <laughs>